it up into champ selection and no corky this game it's taken off the board fresh follows yeah i wonder if uh Luke is gonna get his uh, uh gangplank people kind of fear him the uh, some mid is calling the best gangplank in the west the azir now gets taken off the board so vitality don't want to run up against that again it's also just a good uh, last pick here uh, for splice so i like it just put put sankox on the pre-week 8 meta champions, because we know that Nuketok is better than them, unless his champion pool gets obliterated. He has like 4 champions, he's, he plays a lot, but they can't all get banned out at this point. So Nuketok's comfortable in this match. Maybe we see the return of the Barzillion comp. I really like that one. Oh, I know you did. Uh, it may just happen. They've been pulling it out at key situations. Now, Vitality can no longer catch those top two teams. They're two games behind them, both G2 and H2K, but they can still sit solid and pretty in that third place position and be pretty happy about that. Gragas is that last band for Vitality. What do Splice answer with in the end? I mean, Shook here has his eyes on Lee Sin for sure. He's more of a Lee Sin player than a Lee player. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, I think he actually played a Lee Sin, couldn't really get much done. Just kept walking in. Do I remember that poorly? No, I think he did. Yeah, it was a bit of a rough game for them for sure. He's having his eyes on the Lee this time. Lulu is the last band for Splice. So Vitality, is that first pickable? That's the question. Hmm. Callista's open. Kind of has to be a luck here. Even though Shook really likes his Lee Sin. Obviously, it's Poppy that you can trade off. Picks that you have in your head right now is Lee Sin, what do you want it over the least? You have Poppy in your head, you have Callista in your head. What do you value those picks? Callista generally gets favored here. Um, but you could give it over to Kabe, because Kabe and Nisbeth don't really put that much threat on you. I feel that you could actually get away by leaving Callista open. Mm -hmm. And they opt for the Sivir instead. So. That's bold. See if they can chase it down. I mean, is that... Is it just confidence that they can take the Splice team down so easily? Or it's just maybe maybe these teams really value Sivir out of, out of uh, scrims and it has a way higher priority than we here yep. at the caster that think. Because well, it has a really rough matchup in the Callista, I feel, because you can't predict the rend. It's so hard to do. For comfort, too. I mean, Yarnin kind of made a name for himself on Sivir last year in H2K with a lot of help from Kasing. He kind of turned into this monster carry where he's picking up KDAs of like 25, like 13 kills, 12 assists, and no deaths in a single game as Sivir. But that was the run at UCOMP meta. It's starting to come back a little bit. I'm just wondering if that isn't just some crutch they're falling on. I mean, stylistically, it fits for Vitality. If they put Yarn on Sivir, they make sure that the lane can at least push over and over and over, and they have control of the bot lane. That frees uh. up Shook to not go to the bot lane anymore and then uh, play around Cabochard and then enable him, keep Wonderware down. Overall, I think the pick is fine. I'm just surprised it came out this early. Yeah, the gangplank denial from Splice is picked up. We've seen Wonderware go on that champion a couple of times. It hasn't really worked too many wonders for him. Uh, and the Braum as well. It is, so that's his best. It is considered a good pick into, uh, into Poppy. Uh, surprisingly, at, at first when I saw the matchup, I thought Poppy would win that. But it does turn out that Gangplank's early harass just the sustain, beats the Poppy in lane. Uh, so we may see a different pick here overall from Vitality in top lane. Yeah, and Cabo's not a stranger to picking out things that we tend to scratch our heads at and then just completely obliterating the opposition with it. Ooh. See if he does. The Elise is still available, but you mentioned Shook might still be wanting the Elise, and they don't need to pick it just yet. No junglers on the board. And it looks like, last second, it does get locked. All right, Janna Elise here overall. So that means Janna Saber on the bot lane. That is AFK shove, AFK push. It doesn't matter what AD carry Spice picks up right now. They will be under pressure in a straight 2v2 matchup. That does make me wonder if Vitality was looking for that Graves as a final rotation. Because I think Graves top could have pushed in Gangplank over and over, and then in standard lanes, Vitality would have fared very well. Maybe that is exactly why Splice is looking to deny that pick here. But they're looking to run triple AD when Ramus is open. And we almost have to see a Ramus top pick right now. Can't wait to see if that one does come out. Three ADs on Splice's side. A lot of armor could deter that. Push it back. Vitality is having a little bit of fun in the champ select as they decide what their final rotation will be. Ramus Lashandra wouldn't be a bad rotation here at all. Uh, it gives you the necessary double TP plays you can do. You can set up. You have a wealth of CC. You have late game damage and team fights with the Sivir. And you have the Ramus into triple AD. It would be surprising if he actually goes for the Poppy. I'm certainly thinking about it. I know Kasing always likes to hover the Zillion every single time, but I don't think it'll be that. Uh, with their support all the way locked in, the Bard Zillion combo not feasible for them this time around. Poppy. I really would like to see the Ramus too. I am a bit curious why he does opt into this one. And with the last seconds ticking, he locks it in. The Lissandra does come in, so halfway there. Yeah, obviously, the Gangplank. I feel at this point, does he go top? Does he go mid? Hmm. Still go top. Graves jungle. Callista AD carry. So they're looking for their mid lane pick right here. 
Wunderer has played Gangplank top before, but it's slow. I think if there's one team you don't really want to play that slow against, it is Vitality. So he'll just take control of the map. Well, Vitality have a lot of chase potential. They'll need something that can get away and stay safe. I think he's just going to end it with a LeBlanc here. Look to Snowball. Don't see what else Nismet's going to pick up. Senkuk special. Ah, uh, yeah, Nismet 4, Senkuk's obviously. <laughs> Nismet's not magically going to start yeah. playing mid lane. <laughs> I mean, that'd be something. Uh, we have seen the Zillion mid a couple of times. I don't expect that one to come out. Senkuk's, I feel like he definitely wants to play this LeBlanc. And if they can't get the Snowball off, they've got a lot of late game insurance between Kalista and the Gangplank. I mean, you can actually play Zillion here, though. There's, there's no reason not to. I think, uh, who was it? Yeah, I think we ourselves we got soul killed by a zillion somewhere this split. It does fine into Lissana because her range is relatively short range and she kind of has to step in. If she ever uses an auto attack, she always has to step into bomb range. So it's a pretty safe lane. And you obviously have your ultimate available or cleanse if you run it too. So it's very hard for Lissandra at least to even uh, kill you in the lane. And it just throws people off. And there's still late game a lot of damage overall. Especially when you can revive one of these guys that get picked off mm -hmm. by this hard engage flank. A lot of sustain. I like and a lot of wave clear too, between the Gangplank Graves and that Zillion Bomb. Uh, Vitality might have a hard time trying to siege. They will be looking to chase down, pick people off, see whatever they can get. A lot of CC on that side. But Vitality, they're in a very solid place in the standings, regardless of the outcome today. They can be pretty happy with their inaugural split. Splice, on the other hand, in their first, have had a lot of struggles, a lot of ups and downs. Some wins scattered about, but a lot of losses in the last two games. H2K G2, they have had a tough, tough ending schedule. Let's see if they can end it on a high note here as Yamato Cannon and Shans get themselves a little bit of love there as we get ready to load on up. Now, if you think Splice can walk away with the victory here, tweet at LOL Esports, hashtag SpyWin, S-P-Y, or VIT win if Vitality will continue their reign of dominance over the lower tiers of the table. Send them in. Anytime in the game, we will find out and tally that vote just a little bit later. So Vitality's composition here versus Splice's, I think this is going to get explosive. It might take a little while, Krepo. Yeah, it might take a little while because we may see some lane swaps as we launch Rift. Crowd is ready for this. Haha, <laughs> poor crowd. You don't know what's going to come out here. Lane swaps, 10 minutes, no action, 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh, but they're good sports about it all the same. We've had ward cheers. We've had ice cream chants. I can't wait to see what today brings. Hopefully some good games so far, so good. Vitality Splice all loaded up, and we'll see if those lane swap predictions come true. There was a guy offering me a donut at the end of yesterday. That was very nice. I like the crowd. I like when they bring me food. <sighs> Saves me time. It's almost like they don't feed us. No, 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 we're, we're, we're quite all right. No, we, ha we have, we have uh, a guy called Andre feeding us every day with his uh, catering company. Fantastic overall. Oh, excellent. I like it. It's good catering. Some good lasagna going today. Here. Got us ready for this cast. It's caster fuel, man. For the players as well. Uh, Kasing, Shook, Yarnin, or Nuke Duck rather. Moving in, uh, not for an invade, just try to deter the early pressure and his best. So, Spice looking for center lanes here. Yeah, as, as for matchups go, um, or as far as matchups go rather, the Gangplank beats Poppy in lane, allegedly. Uh, obviously, I haven't played it myself, but that's what people tell me. I've gotten wrecked in that matchup. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know. I, I will not take the Pyro standard, because I, like, I feel like you can get wrecked on both edges of that matchup. But Hyun and Kasing... Uh, on, on, locked into that one. On Janna Saber can AFK push. Uh, they, they will never kill Kabe, but they can deny him CS on their tower. Uh, once a jungler gets into the fold, maybe Nisbev and Kabe can counterplay. Regardless of all that, it does look like we're gonna have standard lanes here. So we need to see if Shook goes for an early clear and then paths to the top lane to put some pressure. Because he will be pathing away from Cabochard, leaving him on an island on an already losing lane, which may be rough here. Yeah. Cabochard has earned quite the reputation for managing to play it big, but they usually rely on getting those optimal picks. This will be a bit of a tougher task for him today. Kasing and Yarn and take their places down to the bottom with Kabi and Nisbet following suit. Yeah. Let's see if they can pick the early level two up and try to bully out this uh, bot lane that is pretty quite inferior in all honesty. Yeah, there won't be any bullying because they're over pushing. Uh, they, they're not looking for the punish on the two. They're just looking to push the wave in as fast as they can on the tower and just deny CS that way. And once Saver gets pushing, it is almost impossible to stop her. Because every time the wave comes, the uh, it'll be half HP by the time the waves meet, if that makes sense. And then the remaining, remaining health is so easily taken off. And if you get engaged on, you get the shield. Early trading here. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So, uh, Gangplank definitely coming in handy with superior range versus Cabo. Both Guardians running grass. Standard mastery is all across the board, really. Uh, although we have seen the Zillion 
it has trended a lot more towards uh, towards that as opposed to the Storm Raiders, the yep. good old Thunderlord's decree. A lot of poke damage you can get off. Uh, and this is for the epic outplay. What you want to do when you're playing a Sivir is aim your skill shot right next to her. You don't actually want to hit her because you want her to spell shield, but you want to make it believable. So just aim slightly next to her. Also, if you do miss your hook or your Brom Q, you uh, say that Krepo told you to do that. And it was all intended. Sometimes you just got to get to the Oh, oh that's unfortunate. Spears were stuck in him. Shook's actually moving up. He might meet the Graves here. Trashy on his blue buff. Could be in some trouble. Dodges away. Quick draws from the cocoon, but Shook says Ooh, that is that's fine. Out of patience. It's reset, though. Yeah, yeah the, the patience bar was almost empty. You got to watch that. At that point, it's better to just reset it immediately. And this is the power of pushing, obviously. You free up your uh, lane members to, to go harass here. The wave's in the tower, so yeah, the sink will go in first here. Nismet now like gets caught. Now. Get poke out. Zillion's coming in because he had to push in mid lane. Newton had to base early. But all in all, it's just wasting each other's time here. That blue buffs is really close to resetting again. Oh, spined oh. away. And Trashy gets denied his own blue. Should be pretty happy with that one as he goes to have some crab for dessert. Uh, rough start for the splice jungler. Do you eat crab for dessert? You can. It's a delicacy in some places. Seems very um, rich. Very, uh, uh, lots of butter. Yeah. Oh, sent cucks. See if he can dodge away. He has to slip out with that summoner spell. Yep. Captain Jack cleanse. Always remember this is the day that you almost caught Nuke Duck. And maybe you'll try again in a few seconds when his cooldown is still down. Kabi gets knocked up by the Howling Gale. Wonder where TP is back up to the top side to deal with Kabi Shard. And you can see that CS differential. The Gangplank is absolutely working wonders right now. Yeah, they didn't lie to me. It does seem that Gangplank beats Poppy <laughs> overall. Continuous harass overall. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if you, look, pin against the wall. if you look at the players that are playing as well. Uh, Wunderware has been playing better, but a player of Cabochard, you can expect that he takes the, the most out of every matchup when even he is losing this severely. It is a very rough pick. Yeah. Much more impressed with Splice's pick and ban phase. You know, I remember we were critiquing them quite a lot at the very beginning of the split and wondering really what they were trying to accomplish, some overcomplicated compositions. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty rough comp they're playing right now. And it is still Vitaly opting into this. They pick the Poppy into that lane. And they're probably relying on just Yarnan and Kasing just getting so much done in the bottom lane. They're doing some CS denials, but also poking away at the tower in the bottom lane. Obviously, as this matchup gets a little longer or a little more experience goes on to Kabashard, he'll be a lot better at dealing with this threat. He can always just disengage with his ultimate worst case. Shook's at the top here. Nuketuck's here, though. They're looking to tilt the matchup favor of Kabashard diving on Wunderware. Three on one, he's caught and no oranges, so he can't make it. K this time still under tower. Cabo tanking way too many shots, has to burn Flash to get away. Finally, they secure the first blood, but it's a near miss for Vitality's top lane. Yeah, no oranges, Vitality. They make it three in the top lane and they make it a KO instead. Wunderware drops down, no teleport either here. Looking to react here on the bottom lane. Trashy, but it's so hard for Kabe and Nisbet to go aggressive without giving it away. So all Spice can do is really just get some counter jungle going. That jungle's empty. Yeah, there's no camps to get. And they just keep seeing him coming back and forth, pathing through that jungle. Nisbeth taking some damage courtesy of Kasing and Yarnin. Uh, and I can't stress enough how how solid that play was from Vitality. That was, do you want play? They have to make a map right now. There was nothing going on in bottom lane that needed to be done. They can also just make sure that bottom lane can survive 2v3. Because it's so easy for them to trade. It's so so convenient for a Janna Saver to play into a melee support. Because you nail very rarely do you get punished. Unless you get uh, dashed to a creep, Q flashed, exhausted, all in, you will almost never die. It's a really good communication here from Shook and Nuke to, to path the top lane. Oh, we talked about it last game, this, this duel lane not putting out a whole lot of pressure from Kabi and Nisbeth. And they are also generally a weaker duo than Yarn and Kasing. We haven't had that much to say about them. Uh, this split, really, it's, it's been kind of invisible pressure. Wonderware has been trying. He hasn't really been succeeding, but this is a matchup that's optimal for him, right? That's why he's leading in this department. Senkux has really been the hero of this team. And it'll be a little while yeah. before the Zillion comes online. And that's the problem I have sometimes with Spice. I can't actually remember one phase where I'm like, damn, that's where Kabe and Nisbev made like a game-changing play on their own. After a full split, Trashy here punishing Nuketuck with the face check. He just claws out. No double bomb from Senkux. And when your team likes playmakers, you become predictable. And if you become predictable, a team with a macro and just game understanding as great as Vitality will just slowly tear you apart. And maybe that's exactly what we will see this game. This time Splice looking for some revenge on this blue. 
Shook took it away. Trashy trying to take it right on back. But Shook is still there, waiting in the wings. Can he get the smite off? Oh, he can sink his fangs in. And they were too worried about the counter pressure. He made it look easy. Just walks in, says, thank you very much for preparing my blue buff. Walks out right now. Spice on the back foot. They can no longer punish that bot, uh, top lane matchup. Due to that roam earlier, bot lane, no kills will happen. But Kasinga's feet up to roam. He's just going to put some deep vision in your sights on one. That's the one ward you want. Now you want one to the right. Will we go for the deep lane ward? To watch your minimap right here. Or is he just going to preserve that lost sidestone ward? Yes, he is. I told you, making sure the bases are covered. And by bases, I mean the enemy jungle. So, might be preparing for this dive here. Shook coming in. It's spotted. Yarnin. Oh, they sing on the tower. Yeah, and they want, they want Spicy. No, they don't actually want to fight them or dive them. They just want them to politely back away from the tower. And now on the top lane, though, Cabochard has to be careful. He can't go aggro when his bot lane is diving or, or pushing a tower. He knows he had a ward too. So Trashy makes the only logical play he can, which is pass to the top side. But there was a pink ward waiting for him. The play is given away, and Vitality take a tower for free. And no Rift Herald is taken in return. Spice really unable to answer with anything right here. Senkuk's trying to go aggressive onto Nuke Duck. The Glacial Path is on, even though he's slowed. Just one bomb on his head, and it won't be nearly enough damage there. Trashy still hanging out in the Vitality jungle, but he's still spotted all around, and there's not a lot for him to take. Looking for the Gromp now, but he's deep in enemy territory. Yeah, Vitality can just play reverse bingo with their vision. Either they see Trashy and they know where he is, or they don't see him, and by yeah, power of exclusion, they can find exactly where he is anyways. And it makes it so predictable uh, for Splice. So Trashy's kind of stuck here. Yeah, predictability, and it has been, as you said, what is sunk splice in a lot of these games? The gold lead is Vitality's way, especially with that extra tower here. Yarn and Kasing now moving up with Kabushar to try and make a power play on this top. And Wonderware getting flashbacks to that three-man dive a few moments ago, or a few minutes ago, I should say. Throws down the barrel here. Let's see if they can get the clear off. Not in time, but Wonder is out. Yeah, good barrel. If that gets cleared, this tower drops immediately. They're obviously going for this three-man push here and waiting for Kobe to push in the bot lane. And then Kabushar just simply TP over. That is the play. Vitality is rotating to open up towers. They don't actually care about kills. They're very turret-focused team overall. I like watching it. Slow and steady. They make few mistakes. Yesterday, notwithstanding, Yarnin steps right up to the plate. And of course, Spell Shield, knowing Nisbeth is going to throw the Winter's Bite right out at him. That tower is not long for the Rift. Kasing and Yarnin still playing very far forward. They're allowed to do this, so you see the vision that they have. They know that Splice cannot act without them knowing about it first. A lot of deep vision on bot side drop, but they have enough around the trucks in the tri bush. Just sieging up and out. Cabochard on that pup is going to generate his own vision, just push up the lane. Oh. Of course, on the react. This is obviously the stalling tool that we have, that cannon barrage. That's why Gangplank used to be such a coveted pick, also in the mid lane, because he can influence sideways without even being there. You're looking for a dive, but Shook comes a little bit too late before the Gangplank is backed away. Wonder where with this teleport. Might just want to. Turn his attention down to the bottom side right now. This tower is going to go down one way or another. Vitality, when they set their sights on it, will not let it go. And they just have so much power right now in the 11-minute mark on the game. Ooh, look at that ward in lane. We might actually see a Nukeduk teleport there, unless Sankuk's path. If Sankuk shows in the mid lane in like 20 seconds from now, we could see a Nukeduk teleport in the top lane and just straight up going for that dive, especially now that Cannon Barrage is down. We will need Kabushar to cancel Woundware's teleport uh, if they want to match that. Cobb has not got his own available for now, but he does have the tools to stop it. Instead, he's moving towards the mid right now. They've caught Crashy on a cocoon. Shook Thank wants you. to go in for this one, and Nuke Duck's coming in around the side. Splice member's very low. On the hunt is Pop. Teleports up. That's going to be Wonder coming in, but Vitality are committing to it anyways, and a whole chunk of damage as Kabi gets put in the frozen tomb, and now the tower will fall. Vitality not losing a man here, and Wonderware trying to deter. Tower still hanging, actually. But they get one for none, and Cabo looking to come around the side here. It's not over yet. Yeah, even in even numbers, Vitality just take slow control of that fight. Good disengage, disengage by Kasing and just single target focus to take one guy down on Cabo. He died with his flash still up. Surprised that Cabochard didn't aim to stop Wunderware's TP there. He instead went mid, just catch the wave, make sure the Senkuts couldn't roam, pressure him in. Surf was up. Vitality were able to catch it. Now they are grabbing themselves. The Rift Herald on the back of that one. Shook will be the man to take it. And a healthy wave pushed right into the top tower. Let's take a look at how that dive happened. This cocoon right here is, is really crucial to set up the play because they put Trashy on low HP and they forced the gap close already. And now Nuka comes in. Claw is already used. Q from Graze is down. TP comes in. And they just simply say, okay, Kabe, you go down. Reset from Kasing. Knocks two people into the wall. Gangplank comes in, but obviously can't really punish. And then it's just simple disengage here. 
step away from the vehicle. And they clinically cleaned him up. So, Trashy trying to set his team up for a dragon in this bottom side, but the Rift Herald already doing some wonders for wherever Shook is going to be. For now, it's the mid lane. And you see also the, the power of this Lissandra pick uh, combined with the Sivir, which we've seen a couple of times right now. You focus on AFK push, which generates your tier one tower. You swap it top, which gener generates you the second tier one tower. Then you put Sivir mid, and you put the Lissandra on a side lane, and you finish off the one three one. Sivir is no longer used for death ball team fight run at you composition. She just use, is used for really safe wave clear that you can leave alone in the lane, and they can then maybe use the ultimate to rotate in between lanes or in the jungle quicker. But it's simply as a one three one overall. Poppy in the top lane, Nurtok on Lissandra in the bottom lane. The three-man squad here in the mid lane, continuously pressuring in and rotating in. And Spice, they have strong champions, but they're slower. Their wave clear takes time on their own. And Kalista can't clear quickly. Braum has a limited impact unless he's actually fighting people, but Vitality will never fight people anyways. They will, will just make you bend by sheer lane pressure. Yeah, and that's just such a tough task to try and force Splice, or spi try to force Vitality, I should say, to to kind of bend to that sort of pressure. What does Splice really need to do, though, other than stalling out, try and get themselves back into the game? Stall, um, land a double bomb somewhere, pick somebody somebody off, you know, suddenly shifting in, in pass passiveness, go aggressive, like, suddenly throw the Braum in, get some stacks, knock them up, get another, like, concussive blow in there, get somebody down, go for a fight, really make use of that uh, Zillion ulti. So far, it's not really working out. Yeah, we haven't seen much out of Senkux. He has been just trying to keep his farm level, still losing out a little bit there to Nuke Duck and Shook taking away as much jungle as he can. Making Trashy's life hard this game. This mid-tier tower will fall very soon. Yarnin goes forward, has the Janus shield on, and he's able to spend it on the tower. Keeps getting the ricochets out, spell shielding the bombs from Senkux, and dodging out another. Yeah, and a, and a good uh, example of why this is working for Vitality, if you look at any pairing with Elise Lissandra, Elise Janna, there's always CC to generate, uh, to set up for the Cocoon. Nado into Cocoon, maybe Cocoon into Nado. Whereas if you look at Splice, there's nobody to really lock anybody down for Senkus to then land his double bombs. And these players uh, that play Zillion so often themselves, they can dodge these bombs. So it's almost impossible for Senkus to get the stun. And nobody else can set it up unless Fate's Call gets used. So Splice kind of getting punished by running too little card control, too much actual damage. And Kabi can't even get under his own tower and stay safe right now. Yarnin and uh, Kasing. Still holding strong in this middle versus Trashy and Senkux. The damage that they're able to put out. Vitality sending two members on this bottom side to just keep getting chip damage on this tower. They've locked Nisbeth up, and he gets pulled in by the Fates Call defensively. Wants to go back in, but the Repel is already gone, and Shook is as well. And that's going to be mid tower. So Oduwamne, uh, Cabo shot rather. I was confused, these two. Cabo pushes top. He doesn't stay there to get the tower. He's Poppy versus Gangplank. He's not going to deal damage, but he rotates to put pressure on the mid lane. Even though this Cannon Barrage comes out, this tower will still fall because, again, there was an engage in the bot lane that then lures away the mid lane defenders from Splice. So they're moving these chess pieces on the map, and every time something gets left out, whether it's the mid lane tower, the soon to be taken bot lane tier 2. And because of the vision, there is no reaction possible on the side of Splice. It's all so predictable. It's textbook from Vitality's side. Continually deny that vision and just take one tower, rotate, take another, and make sure you've kept the enemy on their toes. They do stack five members in this bottom side, and so does Splice, who does not want to take this direct fight. Yarnin walks into what could have been a bad situation, but walks out. Actually, that's exactly what Splice is looking for somehow, though. A force on a 5v5, because they lose the 1v1. Um, that's why you see Vitality backing off as well. The second everybody's grouped in the same area, that is a position on the map that Vitality don't really want to take unless they're out heading gold. They could maybe win, but why would they? They can just do the same thing over and over and over again. Because Cabo Shark yep. with the Sunfire is actually generating pressure in the lane in terms of minion push on Wunderware. Sivir will always push out the lane quicker than whoever she's against. And Lissandra generally does the same at this point in the game. So you have all these pushing lanes everywhere that you can then use for momentum and rotations. And outside of Cabo Shark, this team has generally been very, very risk averse. Why needlessly take these like crazy, crazy fights? They do have the tools to really make it work if they are ahead. And yes, they are ahead. They've got 4,000 gold in the lead. But still, Splice has a very, very strong, hefty AD amount of damage. They've got an the ability to save a champion. And speaking of saving one, it's Senkux, who does get caught by Kabushar. That is a whole lot of damage out from the Vitality top laner. Yeah, Velda. that's a top laner that you can tell that the second role he plays support because he cares about his pink ward. He's not going to get that one. Go down without a fight. Senkux takes half HP down. I'll lie, though, because Kabushar plays AD carry and off roll. <laughs> 
He says he, he says he's the best AD carry on Vitality overall. Well, he has proven it with Lucian. He's, he's actually really and, good. And Graves, you know, was once an AD carry, bottom lane AD carry, I should say. We've now seen him pretty much everywhere else. And it has been a very interesting season six, that's for sure. And Yarn and Kasing moving up to the top side now. Senkuk's all by his lonesome trying to defend this. And they think he knows what's up. No way they can defend this turret. It just continually happens. Senkuk's that glacial path hit him right on the nose. But he was confident wasn't going to be able to die from that one. Shook, though, a little bit low. The bombs are flying. One lands on Nuke Duck, turns around. Yeah. And they deter him for now, but it is still a matter of time. Overstay just a little bit. Senkux obviously is having the issue that he can't double bound the entire wave immediately. So he took three creeps down, three remained. And then Vitality did the same thing they did the entire game. They show heads and it's like, hey guys, we're here. Uh, would you like to get dove? No, please step away from the tower. We will take it in exchange uh, for your cooperation. Obviously, they overstay a little bit. They should have just repeated that one more time on the wave or rotate. They got a little greedy. That's why Spice chunked them out. Extreme confidence in their ability to keep pushing forward and not get flanked. I mean, all those all those wards that they've established all throughout the jungle. Spice of Magic with a few, but you just look at the number of pinks and see if they can set up fights like this one. Spice getting melted here. It's Nisbeth in the back that's going down after Trashy, and the rest of the team had just about all fallen. Senkuk's nowhere to be found. Nuke Duck with a double. Yarnin gets Nisbeth. Everyone is gone in the blink of an eye, and Vitality can now march up unopposed down the mid. Yeah, out of seemingly nowhere, Vitality just clean up that fight. 5v4, Senkix wasn't even there to revive anybody. He will now revive himself, more likely, eventually. But what a fight here. What a good flank from Vitality, all on the same page. We got to see that one again. Cabo Shard is the one who started setting these things up. And here it was, right in the middle with the double flank, the pincer move. Oh, this is fantastic. Cabo Shard on one side, that cancels two dashes there. The Graves E and the Kobe Hop. Then he knocks them all up. At the same time, with the tornado from Kasing, Kasing is so good at landing tornadoes overall. This one wasn't easy, but if you watch him play in team fights, he's really good at channeling them and getting them for max duration. And then after all that, when they were done flying in the air, they land into a frozen tomb, and they got buried. Obviously, Senkux will have to ulti here, or had to ulti here rather, and he died. Just to stay alive. Yeah, eight seconds on the next dragon. Baron will hit the rift pretty soon. Vitality are in a pretty happy situation here. Even more extending that gold. These splice have been completely blanked this game. No towers, no dragons, no kills. And they're down. I mean, this is this gold. textbook execution of 1v1. You pressure around your pushing lane. You make sure that your one weak lane doesn't lose too much. That's why you roam for it instead. You use the pressure from pushing lanes in mid with your jungle to roam top to fix your losing lane. And as we go for another fight here. Yeah, it's forcing it though. They were getting a bit hypey. We talked about how they don't necessarily need to do that. Uh, Nuka yeah. does have his teleport. So does Cabo Shark. The double TP coming in handy. Wonder where he's got it too, but he's a little bit occupied on the top side. Cabo can push this with impunity. No one is able to do a thing to him. Stun momentarily. No problem. He's got the hammer. He's going to take it to him. Nisbeth has to get pulled back in by the Fates Call yet again. Meanwhile, look at the bottom. Nuke Duck just casually strolls up and takes an inner turret. That is the fifth for Vitality to zero of Splice. Yeah, that tower wasn't like 200 health remaining from the earlier action. Vitality push up in two lanes, take control of whatever's in between. If they have wards left, they place them. If not, they just take the objectives, whether it's jungle camps, dragon. And it all comes from the push first, action later, whether it's the, the rotate in the dive in the top lane, whether it's all these towers they managed to isolate. It is impressive that you can take five towers on the map without losing a single one. Something we haven't mentioned, that they're on the verge of perfect gaming spice here. No towers, no kills, no dragons. It's only 21 minutes into the game, too. Splice, they're looking clinical compared to yesterday. After a very disappointing loss to Rocket. Splice themselves were trying to keep their hopes of 7th place alive and avoid that promotion tournament. But in this game, it's going to take a Herculean effort to come right back. 10,000, well, 8,000 gold lead at this point. 20 minutes, that is just absolutely bonkers. It's ridiculous. If there's anything Splice can do to get back in this one, they've just got to get a pick on one or two members and maybe then try to grab a great objective, but they're the ones who are getting jumped on now. Nuke Duck has to Frozen Tomb himself, a little premature here, but in comes Cabo Shard for the backup. Trashy's still trying to do the damage, and Nisbeth is going to get caught. The Fangs get sunk in. He gets the big knockup, but his health bar was going way too low, and Cabo in the front might have gotten too aggressive here. A little low for him, but they're still hanging around. Double Bomb's on. This might be the chance Splice is looking for. The Monsoon, collateral damage, doesn't do a damn thing! And and Splice are still looking to chase Ignite, Exhaust, I should say, on Wonderwear. And that'll be the end of that. Yeah, I'm not waiting for Splice to win a fight. I'm just desperately hoping Vitality do not sacrifice the perfect game. That is what we're playing for right now. They, they've already won, but they just need to make it perfect. And that was really well played here. 
the instant heal comes up, I'm seeing when he knows the bomb will kill Kavashard. Then Kavashard is aware of his surroundings later on as he passed. I really like double TP because, like, you ordered one TP, but if you call right now, but wait, there's more. Another poppy comes out here. Zone trashy. Nuketuck then turns onto Nisbeth. He's exposed. Just keep your eyes on Kavashard right now. He dances, dances on the edge of death. So he gets double bombed almost here, but he steps away from one. Fades back. Barely gets hit by the barrel here because Sing knows he has to start healing right now as the double bomb comes in. And then he dodges the barrel that's in front of him, walks into the nice little alcove there. Barely doesn't get bombed there. Exhaust from Kasing, it's own wound aware. <laughs> and Vitality does such a phenomenal job keeping this perfect game alive. Yeah, 7-2-0. Spice just can't get an angle in. Not for lack of trying though, and you look at all the wards, one thing might be on the mind of Vitality. It could be Baron, but uh, we have seen teams before throw it all away. Mm -hmm. And if they just bait it... There's well, one, more blue trinket. one more blue trinket. Who has it? Ooh, it's... It's on Kobe. Kobe's gonna use it right now, no but he has to get it. in range. That is gonna be terrifying. You ping the Baron and you can't see anyone, and you're like, where are they? Yeah, either oh, they're doing it, or they're waiting for you. And Nisbeth. Goodbye! And Sunkux and Trashy look to try a return fight onto Shook. He pops up, he pops down. That's how gravity works. Gravity holding down. Splice right now. New no! Go. Oh, the Frozen Tomb! Staying alive! The perfect game is still real. And now it's Yarnin with the killing spree. Nisbeth in the back. He's blown up. The double kill from the Sivir. Cabo knocks them back into their own fountain. And they still don't lose a man. 9-0. to zero, And it's Baron time, boys. Yeah, Nuke Duck almost gave him the scare of a lifetime. But he had Zone. He has Hourglass. And that's the power of Lissandra. You go in, self-cast Frozen Tomb. You try and kill him. No, another two and a half seconds. Then the Janna comes in with the extra shield here, and by that time, the Splice remaining members were dead or knocked away. Get That's low bad. to give Splice false hope, unfortunately. All right, Splice are gonna try for a desperation answer back on the Baron. It does go down. The Cannon Barrage Ooh. was helping them, but they are quite low in this one. They're gonna have to bail out Cabo. Oh no, he's got the Steadfast Presence on, and Splice will get the chase on. Hal and Gale knocks him up. Splice still trying to chase this one in, but they are clean and clear. And this is another perfect game that Shook's involved in. Obviously not at World, not against the Koreans. <laughs> a little easier against Splice maybe, but this is what it's all starting. This with, yeah, that's really trying to get some vision at least in his jungle. He has to do it now, otherwise he'll have to face it later anyways. Tankiest member goes down that quick. Yeah, and then here. Oi. Flash in. I like it from Nuke Duck. You never want to go and pop your E on the location where people expect it. It's better to pop it early and then flash because you will not be uh, in the area of where skill shots and like smoke screen lands because everybody sees where the sound of Claw is going to, right? So it's better to pop it halfway and then flash into the fight if you know you'll convincingly win it anyways. So he goes in for the flash W, self-cast R, then has Zonias available. So that may look like a low Baron power play. Bearing in mind, of course, that already massive lead for Vitality, over 10,000 gold. But, why is that so low? It's what? because it's just the Baron, and then Splice were able to get some free farm for like a moment, and they're just gonna start answering back. They didn't kill anybody in it, right? Yeah, yeah, but you see it it must, yeah that's what I'm looking for, dude. I'm just, my pressure broken game, you know? It's like <laughs> I'm Gollum almost. <laughs> my pressures don't hurt it. The filthy Hobbiton won't I wonder if Vitality feel the same way. Yarnin's just stepping up bold maneuvers here, but it's all the shields. All the CC, Vitality have been absolutely blanking the Splice team here. And they can just keep doing the 1-3-1 one, one, or the 4-1 and straight into five members. They have no yeah. fear anymore. Split, push, and then consolidate one objective, go for it. Then spread out again, clean out the defense. We see an engager coming in, Braum gets thrown in. Yeah, gets the ulti off, but there's the instant monsoon, and Nisbeth is gone yet again. Splice are just trying to figure out if they can get anything around the side, but no, the answer is, and wonder where going down the rest of Splice tune to fall the triple kill. Coming in for Nuke Duck, looking for more, looking for Sin Duck's last man standing. He's got his ult, and he's just trying to be annoying, but Vitality aren't buying yeah, it. Yeah, this guy on this screen, he won the perfect game as well. Shots, oh, ready with man. a victory dance. He just might get it now. Distraction maneuver, but it's Cabo Shard keeping them all back, and the double bomb lands. Will no, that be the end Cabo. of the game? Cabo, staying alive, he says, and he winds up the hammer. Sin Duck's looking for the kill. Oh. Oh, be able to find it, and Senkux is out of this one. The last Nexus turret's going down. Vitality have done it. 27 minutes on the clock. The Nexus is down. Perfect win. For